Tom Curran covers the Patriots, and uh, he joins us now. Tom, how's morale today? Oh, New England is down. New England is panicked. New England is freaking out, which is what New England is prone to do. Wait, are you being facetious, or do you really think that there's there's panic in uh, Boston? Uh, there's, a, there's a level of resignation among Patriots fans, or not resignation, but uh, sky is chicken whittling that goes on um, where – the one cloud that passes through an otherwise perfectly blue sky is just the the sign that the hurricane's coming. So I think that 2015 season, Dan, where the Patriots lost uh, four of their last six, including uh, in the playoffs as well in in Denver, that left a dent. And last night's game looked like that stretch at the end of 2015. What would concern you the rest of the regular season and certainly going into next week's game with Pittsburgh? You know, there were so many factors that went into last night. I think it would be uh, teams playing that press coverage on the outside and getting pressure on Brady. And I think that that Miami, having played them two weeks before, said, you know what, we're not going to do what we did last week. We're going to do this. And they got pressure. You know, the Patriots are not really stout. They don't have big guys in the middle. And I think that Sue and some of the other players got some pressure in the middle on Brady that didn't allow him to step up as he's been doing all year. And really, they're outside receivers, and this is one of the reasons um, it was really damaging to lose Edelman, is they don't have that unbelievable sudden quickness to get separation. Cooks is awesome as a downfield receiver, but he doesn't have that kind of quick nuance where he can get free, and I think you saw that last night. Brady was one for seven throwing to him uh, for just a late 38-yarder. Uh, the national criticism today, it feels like it's a little bit of piling on with Brady, hot takes that may be starting to show his age. Uh, the last three games haven't been very good. The first 10 were uh, MVP-like, but the last three, uh, what do you make of that? You have to look a little bit past his statistics and look at the statistics of the team. In the two previous games, they ran for almost 200 yards. So they ran for 196 against Miami and 198, I think, against Buffalo. So they weren't throwing the ball a lot, and they were having great success with that. Against against Buffalo, they came out in the second half um, after being tight with the Bills, and they just hammered it to Gronk, who's actually having his one of his best years, I think, and the Buffalo game was one of his most dominant games I think I've ever seen him play, especially in the second half until he lost his mind. So... I think that that would be overstating it. And just if it was a 28-year-old, no one would say that. Yeah, just trying to figure out, you know, you get Gronk back against Pittsburgh, but it's in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. How does Belichick make this a positive, which he seems to he's able to do this somehow, some way that now we'll get a good Patriots performance after what we didn't get last night? I think Gronk comes back. What we saw from Pittsburgh the other day, the loss of Ryan Shazier is terrible in the individual level of it and and incredibly damaging to their team because their speed at the linebacker position is is massive. And the Patriots have worked to try and get those mismatches at the linebacker level. Why weren't they able to do it last night? Because Miami was sending extra rushers, and they were getting home with it, and they weren't getting the separation. Usually when you send an extra rusher at Brady – somebody's able to uncover. But that's not really a strength of Cooks in terms of short area quickness or for Hogan. Having Gronk back will add just a kind of a safety net. And, you know, you, you figure it, it absolutely, Dan, casts the game in a different light now that you've seen the Patriots allow more than 17 points for mm-hmm. the first time in a while and look stagnant offensively. But I still think that that was the aberration on Monday night as opposed to what you would probably see from them going forward. If I said you could have Brady winning one more Super Bowl in the next three years, you had to put up (laughs) $1,000. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, I thought there was going to be an either or. Or Jimmy Garoppolo wins one in 2024 (laughs) for the Patriots. I mean, that's that's really, I mean, he looks so good. And I think that there is a lot of hand-wringing around here about oh, that as well. No. Really? Uh-huh. Uh-oh. Yeah, oh, there's a lot of seller's remorse going on. <laughs> we ain't get enough. We ain't get enough. So, Who wins the Super Bowl uh, sooner, Garoppolo or Brady? That's right. Who ends up with more MVPs? Yeah. Um, 
when did, and then Brady has to go home in retirement and watch Jimmy just carry the San Francisco 49ers mm. in the Bay Area. Well, yeah. I used to play some quarterback too, Jim. Sure you did. All right. Uh, uh, finish, finish this question here. If the Patriots oh, – no, no. I, you're going to go with Brady. That's your boy. If the Patriots yeah. lose to the Steelers, dot, dot, dot. The Steelers will still find a way to <laughs> pee down their leg before the end of their season. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. Well said. <laughs> Thank you. Sir. Thank it's you. Thank first you. thing that occurred to me. <laughs> I know. I know. I don't want to know the second thing. Thank you, Tom. That's Tom E. Curran, NBC Sports New England. He covers the Patriots. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV or download the Dan Patrick Show app.